Hi, here's Alex from the Siebel Hub. And today we want to look at some cool no coding or coding experience. So stay tuned for that. Before we dive in, let me tell you something about the recent developments on the Siebel Hub training pages. So we have brand new training out there. And if you follow the link in the description, you can learn everything about the new Siebel Hub learning experience to get you ready for Siebel 24. Uh, we have three new courses, Siebel new features for architecture and admins, Siebel new features for developers, and Siebel new features for application integrators. So these are now a split course experience of our prior workshop course. So make sure to check those out and make sure that you get the most out of Siebel 24 with the Siebel Hub learning experience. So today's topic is inspired by a conversation I had on the Oracle support forum. So there was a question, how can you conditionally format a cell, so to speak, in a list applet? And as you can see on my screen here, I am actually doing that right now with the probability field. So if there's a low probability it is red background, if there's a very high probability it's green, and if it's medium probability, it's an amber tone. So of course this works as I scroll down and is updated. So interestingly enough, there are two potential solutions that will satisfy that requirement. The first one is driven by a documented but quite unknown applet user property. So Let's check that out first. So that's a no code example, if you will. And then we have a code example as well. So the applet that I've been modifying here is the vanilla opportunity list applet, of course, applies to any list applet. And if we look at the applet user props, I have added five user properties. Yes, five user properties, what you need is, is all you need is not the full truth, but that's it. So here's the client PM user property declaration. This is a sequential user property and whatever you declare becomes user properties that you can project towards OpenUI, more to be more exact, into the properties of the presentation model. So the standard Siebel code, of course, honors several of these values. You might have heard about the drag and drop in list. Uh, this user property is called record state field. So the state field for a record. So that means you define a field as the value of this property. So here I have, I have declared that record state field property and the field is a calculated field which returns three values, low, mid or high. As you can notice, I have added these three values as three additional client PM user properties in my declaration. And for each of these values, I declare a separate user property and the value of this is a CSS class that will be applied to the row where the value of that field is the one that is the name of the user property. So if the value is high, the row class uh, and class will be added cx dash prop high, cx dash prop low for low and so forth. So this of course is very valuable in combination with calculated fields. It's quite unbeatable because it's no code. Uh, the Siebel standard renderer or presentation models, uh, the PMPR of the Siebel OpenUI standard, pick that up and apply the class. So I've created a custom field here. You can use any field, of course, but my custom field is, well, a calculated field. Let's check it out. Let's go to the opportunity BC. Let's check out the field. So I've created two fields um, for readability. I created a PRB field, just a short name, which takes the value of the primary revenue win probability. You see what I did there. And then my calculated field, which is used in the applet, is ba based on the 
numeric value of the probability returning low for less than or equal to 20, uh, mid for less than or equal to 70, so that's the else or else high. So anything above 71 or equal to 71 will be high. So that's what the field returns. Uh, one drawback of the no code solution is you have to include that field as a visible column in your list applet. So let's go back to the list applet and check out the list columns. That's not the applet actually. So here are the list columns for the opportunity list applet and I have added a column for my new custom field. There it is. And I have of course exposed it as a web template item in the edit list template. Let's just check it out and retrace my steps. So here somewhere, there it is. And it must be a visible or available uh, field. It must be visible in the UI. Otherwise the trick doesn't really work. So which is probably why uh, people dislike this because um, you need an additional column. Uh, of course you could if the column is simple enough, you could use an existing column, but in this case, the probability can be anything between zero and 100, including decimals. So we cannot just have uh, one property for each possible value. So once this is in place and you're testing it, I'm inspecting my workspace uh, right here, uh, then you will not see anything. So uh, let me show you how it looks when you actually run this without any change in your style sheets. Yeah, so this is uh, maybe a little bit disappointing. There is no magic here involved that generates a CSS class for you, but something has happened because of my configuration. Let's check out the rows. So this is a 60% probability here. And if I look at the rows, I can see that each row now has a class. Here it is. Uh, the, I zoom in a little bit here so you can see that. So here's the class edit CX prop mid. So that's what the user property is really doing, adding the class to the row in the table. So there's the next row, for example. Let me just collapse this. Here's the next row and it has the CX prop low class because of zero probability. So for each row, the class is added but of course you have to write some custom CSS to take care of that class. And you could either highlight the entire row with a background color or anything goes with CSS, or you can select, um, let's say the one column that drives the value, in this case, the probability column. So if you look into columns or cells rather of that table, uh, then we, there is no class edit, but of course we can use the parent table row and then find a TD element. And we just need, a, let's say, a unique identifier. So the identifier here includes the row number, the applet placeholder, and the column name. So that's the field name with underscores instead of spaces. So we can use that column name as an ident as part of the identifier. So let's see the CSS I came up with. It might not be the most clever CSS, but here I'm looking for a table row with uh, the low class and inside that table row looking for table definitions, TDs, with an ID that contains, asterisk equal means contains, uh, primary revenue win probability. And if it's the low class, I set the background to a reddish hue. If it's the mid medium class, I set a different background. And if it's high, I set it to green and, and so forth, you get the picture. So this is in a custom style sheet, of course. You have to put all your custom CSS in a custom style sheet. And with the style sheet applied, then uh, of course the visual effect starts kicking in. Notice when you select a field, um, that's not a background there. You would have 
probably don't want that, but if the user sets a value, of course, 80, and you step off the record, you can see, uh, works like a charm. So the framework takes care of that, no JavaScript code, just a little bit of CSS and a few user properties and that <laughs> calculated field in my case. So let's see what happens when I remove that field. So that is use columns displayed or something. Remove that field. It's no longer visible in the applet. Uh, there's a caching thing here, but once I uh, go away from the view and go back in, I see, oops, uh, yeah, <laughs> the background goes away because the field is not visible. So that is, of course, a little bit of a drawback, but it's probably worth the price of the ease of use of that user property. So let's check it out one more time. The record state field user property is what we declared here, a standard Siebel user property documented in the configuring Siebel Open UI guide. And that takes the name of a field, which then has specific values, which you declare as additional PM user props. And for each value, you provide the name of a CSS class that will be added to the row. And then you have to work your CSS magic. All right. So what if you're very unhappy, upset about the fact you need that additional column in the applet and you want to achieve the very same thing? Of course, there's always open UI, JavaScript code. And let's investigate a example solution that I put together rather quickly, to be honest, uh, to accomplish the very same thing. Uh, but of course, without the need to add any column to the applet because the conditional logic, so to speak, is placed in JavaScript. Now, the best place, of course, to create JavaScript that changes the user interface styling, uh, the elements of the DOM, that is, of course, a physical renderer. So here's the renderer I came up with. It's a standard Siebel renderer extension as discussed in our open UI classes, for example. So if you want to learn more about Siebel open UI, go to the link in the description, follow uh, the links to our Siebel hub open UI classes. And in a list applet renderer, the bind data event, if you will, is called very often, especially when you scroll down, when you change records. So this is a perfect place to call my custom function, which I created inside this renderer. I call it apply conditional format. So here's my custom code that is executed anytime bind changed, bind data is executed. I made a comment here so you know what to add to your custom CSS file to work with the code. That's the exact same code as you recognize that I've already put in here in the CSS. So um, what does the code do? The usual bits at the beginning, I grab the PM because I'm in a renderer and I use the PM to get the raw record set. Why the raw record set? Because it has no formatting, especially for numeric fields like probability, uh, I really don't want to worry about any percentage signs or uh, whatever uh, extra characters the, the formatting adds. So I get the raw, I still get a string, but I can convert it to a number. Um, I get the grid. That's very useful for working with uh, list applets. The grid is the jQuery grid, the jq grid. And that's the table that shows the data. So I can search inside the table, make sure I stay inside my applet. And I get also the placeholder. And I'm quite sure I'm not even using that. So that might, it's a little bit redundant here. So, and here's a little bit of cleanup, not too clever, but I want to make sure that none of these classes is present when the code starts running. And then I run for, looking for the primary win uh, revenue win probability field. So if that field is present in the current record set, then we iterate the record set. R gets a number, an index zero, starting with zero. So I can add one to get the row number in the UI. I have a default value for the class and I get the probability 
for the field. So using the current record with the field name, very convenient in list applets. Um, then converting it to an integer because now we are doing some conditional logic. So you see that conditional logic that I had in one line in a calculated field becomes a few lines here in JavaScript. And according to the probability, I set the class string. And then finally, I find inside the grid, find the table row with that index number and add the class. So this is probably what the standard code does as well. Of course, not in that very exact way. But this should result in the class being added to the row. And if I have my custom CSS file ready, it should still work. So I've registered that physical renderer in the manifest. And I've already reloaded. So this is not using my workspace. It's uh, using the main workspace where the changes have not been delivered into. But still, I see the probability field. So scrolling down, of course, proves that it works for uh, the usual events in an applet. And I've opened the code in uh, the Google Chrome developer tools. So let me play, place a breakholder into that breakpoint, <laughs> sorry, into that code real quick and just scroll down and really confirm, yes, this is now running uh, the code. And let's quickly step through the code. So you can see that it removes the classes once to clean up and then, uh, well, for each row, it does the calculation. So this is a high and now it adds the class and you can see it pop up green for the first row. And of course, as we step through the rows, um, you can see how the code applies the logic and of course adds the class and the browser uh, CSS engine kicks in. Okay, let's clean up the debugger. So there you have it, um, two potential solutions for a requirement to add conditional logic. Of course, this works, uh, as you can see, it works with no special columns because it's JavaScript. You're free for any extravaganza you want to implement. But of course, you own some you own some more lines of code and you're responsible for your code so that it doesn't break during updates or so. The uh, user property is probably uh, more stable because it's relying on a no code solution. So this video is brought to you by the Siebel Hub Learning Experience, yeah, your number one stop shop for anything related to Siebel CRM. Uh, we have the new features classes we have already discussed. And if you're interested in learning OpenUI, check out our OpenUI basics or OpenUI professional courses. You find all the links in the description. Thanks much for watching today. Take care and bye bye. Thank you.